Good morning, my friends. Welcome to my channel, Needlebug. My name is Karen, and today we're here to talk about the basics of hardanger embroidery. Our session today is on supplies. What supplies do you need to do hardanger embroidery? So let's talk a little bit about that. First of all, before I start, let me say you will see my email address down in the bottom my right corner hopefully it's your right also if you send me an email market hardanger i have um, a series of handouts that i will give you access to um, it's a lot of what i'm going well it's all of what i'm going to talk about today there's a chart in there. There's um, photographs of how to do certain stitches. And it's just, there's also graphs in there for, for stitching buttonhole stitch and cluster blocks and, and all of those things. So it's a lot of information that may be helpful to you. So if you send me that email, I will give you access to that file in my Dropbox. Email address is in the bottom corner of this video and as I said, Market Hardanger. So today we're going to talk about what supplies do I need? Well, first of all, you need your fabric. Now, I did not lay that out here, but fabric is really a matter of preference. Um, some people, not everyone, but there are people out there that are under the misconception that hardanger, oh, I have to use 22 count hardanger fabric. Well, that's really not necessarily the case. If you want to use that, certainly by all means use that. But you really can use any even weave fabric. Um, first of all, let me say Ada cloth or Aida cloth does not work because that has multiple threads that make up each of the blocks <clears throat> and it's difficult when it comes to pulling the threads i know there are people out there who have done it um, it's not something that i recommend doing it and certainly not recommending for a beginner uh, i would steer away and not use eight o'clock you can use other fabrics such as lugana Jobelin, Davos, Linda, Linen. So any of your fabrics that are woven in the same manner as, say, Lugana is woven, where you have one thread, that one thread horizontally and one thread vertically that make up the intersections. Okay. Hardanger cloth has two threads. So it's two threads vertically, two threads horizontally, and that's what makes up your um, intersection. I think the industry has done a disservice in naming 22 count fabric hardanger fabric. Um, was it for reasons to maybe market that fabric better? You know, I really don't know. Um, but just because it's called hardanger does not mean that you must use that fabric. A hardanger is supposed to be lacy, like you see in this piece that I have laying here. It's supposed to look like a piece of lace. That was the true intent. When you do hardanger on 22 count hardanger fabric, my opinion, strictly my opinion it looks thick and chunky it takes away that lace effect the finer the count that you use the more lace like it looks so if you're using the 22 count fabric and these these are my opinions only okay 22 count fabric looks thick, bulky, and chunky to me. 
not something I prefer. You can use 20, and on a 22 count fabric, you're going to use size 5 and size 8 pearl cotton. So there already you're using almost the thickest pearl cotton. It takes away from the delicacy of the piece. You can use 25 count. And on 25 count, you would use, I used 8 and 12. Okay. 28 count, 8 and 12. Size pearl cotton. 30 count, 8 and 12. 32 count, 8 and 12. The, those are the size pearl cottons. 35 count, size 8 and size 12. Now, let me just grab something here real quick. Okay, sorry about that. You can even go lower than 35 count. I'm experimenting with a piece of 40 count. And on 40 count, I have switched it to linen thread. Comes in reels like this, and it's numbered a bit differently. The linen thread I'm using is, okay, it's this one that's unraveling. <laughs> The linen thread I'm using is size 50 slash 3, and that is for, that's not going to focus very well, that is for the cluster blocks, and then I'm going to use 80 slash 3 for the needle weaving. So let's see if we can get this to focus here a little bit. This is what it looks like on 40 count linen. Yes, you can see I had to do a little bit of a frogging because I made some mistakes. But that's focus here. Let's adjust the focus a little bit. Well, that's getting blurrier. Hold on. Well, it's a little hard to get that to focus, but you get the idea. Okay. I will take a picture of it and insert a picture. Yeah, it's a little easier for it to focus when it's further away. But that's 40 count linen. It has been done on linen, even finer, higher count than 40 count. Okay. But as I said, I have to experiment. And I really wanted to experiment with using linen thread. It's a bit different to work with. Um, but I think I am getting the hang of it. So just wanted you to know that that option is also out there for you once we get through the basics of how to stitch. So fab that should cover fabric pretty much. So what else do you need? Well, in that case, I'm using linen thread. But for the purposes of this series, we're going to use pearl cotton, okay? I am going to stitch on 22 count hardanger just for teaching purposes only. And that is so that you can see better what I'm doing. Okay, I want you to be able to see it and see it well so that you can follow along. So that being said, what we're going to use is we're going to use a size 8 pearl cotton. And I chose a 
a dark, this is number 500, a dark green. And we're going to use a size 12 pearl cotton. The 8 will be used for your blocks and any of your surface satin stitching. The 12 will be used for the cutting and the wrapping and a few other surface stitches like eyelets or a double cable stitch. Um, mainly those two for the purposes of this this series. So you're going to need pearl cotton. Pearl cotton comes in balls, certain colors. Certain colors come in skeins. So it's your choice which you want to get. Um, not every color comes in pearl cotton. So if you want to use colors as opposed to traditional white on white or ecru on ecru, if you want to use colors, I would suggest looking at a DMC chart that lists which colors come in floss, which colors come in pearl cotton. I mean, on your DMC uh, color cards, it will tell you that. It will tell you which colors come in what size pearl cotton. That's the other thing. If it comes in size A pearl cotton, it might not necessarily come in 12. So it, if you want to use colors, it's a good idea to have a color chart that also tells you what availability there is out there so that you can pick your colors if you're going to do colors accordingly. For myself, I tend to do white on white or ecru on ecru or white on ecru. I personally like the traditional look as opposed to putting colors in it. Although I have done some with colors, so that being said. <laughs> the next thing you're going to need is a tapestry needle. Now, tapestry needles go the same way as work the same way as they do in counted cross stitch. You want a needle that is going to accommodate the size thread that you are working with. So if you're using size 5 pearl cotton on 22 count hardanger fabric, you're probably going to want at the very minimum a 24 needle and possibly a 22 because you want to be able to accommodate that thread and if your needle is too small you're not going to get that thread through without a fight <laughs> so you want a needle with a big enough eye to accommodate the thread on with size 5 pearl cotton it's going to be at least a 24 and possibly a 22 needle. With 8 and 12, I use a 26. Or a 24. On any given day, it could be one or the other. <laughs> and if I'm doing working on my 40 count linen, I'm using a 26. You want to be able to accommodate your thread through the eye of the needle and open up the hole enough so that the thread passes through. The eye opens it enough so the thread can pass through without getting a lot of friction between the fabric and the thread. You know, this always, <laughs> I know people like to hear the sounds of um, thread going through fabric and that's what do they call that ASMR for a lot of people however it might be a sound that you enjoy and it might be a very rhythmic sound and it might be a very pleasing sound for a lot of people but what's happening is your thread is dragging along the fabric 
that sound is the drag of the thread against the fabric. And that is why your the tail end of your fabric frays or your your thread tends to get thinner and eventually break. It's because of that friction. So keep that in mind. Just a little tidbit to keep in mind. Okay? So that's needles. Again, you choose the needle that's going to best accommodate your thread. Okay? Scissors. Of course you need a pair of scissors. Absolutely. Beyond a doubt. Because we are going to be cutting when we get to that stage. And I know it's scary, but hang in there. We will get you through that first cut. All right. I laid out several scissors here that I like and that I use. Um, unfortunately, some of them are not available. But what you want with scissors is a scissors that has a very thin, a thin blade, sharp to the points, and is comfortable for you to handle because depending on your piece, you're going to be doing a lot of cutting. But you want thin, sharp blades such as this. This is a pair of, let me see. This is a pair of Dovo number 40. Dovo, I'm angry with you. No, I'm not angry. I'm upset with you because they stopped making scissors. However, if you shop around, you may still be able to find some in your smaller shops. You may be able to find some. These are my favorites right now for cutting. This is another pair of Dovo. It's number 3615. And again, if you look, the blades are, they're not as long, but they are thin and they are sharp, sharp to the end. Um, I honestly haven't used these a lot yet, but I will be testing them out some more. This is again another pair of Dovos, and I think this is the ones, if I remember correctly, this is the ones that they call their hardanger scissors. And they have very sharp, pointy blades on them. Okay. And when we get to the cutting, you'll see why you need thin, sharp blades. But we're not going to go into that today. We'll do that when we get to the cutting. These I've had for years, many, many, many years. I bought them a long time ago. And they are a pair of Bohin. And I really should have looked to see if they are still available. They're very small, but these blades are sharp. And they're easy to get into your fabric so that you can cut. And the holes are a bit larger. I've done a lot of cutting with this pair of scissors. I also like these. They're small, they're manageable, so the, uh, they don't have a number on them. It's just a bowhin scissors and they're probably a petite something or other. So those are the scissors that I usually choose one of <clears throat> pardon me one of those four when i'm ready to do the cutting these are a pair of bohin and i just found these or just heard about these um, i have not used them to cut yet 
but they are angled. They are very sharp. Um, my worry is being able to control them and manipulate them in order to cut, because I do not cut just one thread at a time. I cut all four threads at the same time. And that will make more sense when we get into the cutting video. Um, so if these are something that you might want to try, they're reasonably priced. Oh, pardon me. Snuck up on me. <laughs> they are very reasonably priced. Um, so it, a lot of it, a lot of your choice in scissors depends on how much you're willing to spend. You know, when you when you're talking Dovo scissors, you're talking some change. <laughs> you're talking a fair amount of money to buy a pair of Dovos, and the unfortunate part is they're not making them anymore. You may be able to, like I said, you may be able to find some in smaller shops, but for the most part you probably aren't going to find a pair of Dovos. Um, some people use Ginger scissors, and those are okay if you're using the larger count fabric, like your 22 count. But if you're getting into the finer counts, like I'm working on 40 count, there's no way I'm going to put a Ginger scissors in there to cut those threads. There's just, that's just not going to be happening. They're, the blades are too big. So your scissors may vary with whatever fabric you are using. So just keep that in mind when you're purchasing scissors. And then let me, yeah, the other question is to hoop or not to hoop? That is the question <laughs> and it's certainly a personal choice okay I don't use a hoop for parts and I use a hoop for other parts okay if you're doing a larger piece like this doily for example was a bit larger Right, let me see. It's about 20 by 20, maybe 21 by 21, somewhere in that size. It does help you to manage fabric a bit better. But if you are going to use a hoop, and either way is really okay, a couple of things. Personally, I find it easier and makes more sense to me when I'm stitching Hardanger to use a sewing method. If you're going to use that sewing method and use a hoop, you don't want your fabric tight in the hoop. You want the fabric to have enough play so that you can manipulate it. Okay, so that you can manipulate your needle in and out of the fabric. The other thing you don't want is the newer hoops, like your newer plastic hoops, have that little lip on them. If you have a hoop that has that lip on, do not put the lip on the top that it scrunches your fabric and your stitches. Yes, they, they will probably bounce back, but let's not add insult to injury. This hoop that I have right here is one of my favorite hoops. And this is old. <laughs> this is a really, really old hoop because it does not have the lip. Okay, it is, it's smooth. It does not have the lip. This is the one I use the most. A, because it's only four inches, it's small. And I need to be able, especially with Hardanger, I need to be able to manage the back of my fabric. 
because I'm going to scoop down and scoop up and I need to feel the back to know where that needle is and scoop it back up. Okay, so you never, I use this rule, it's not a rule, I use this recommendation or this uh, best practice, let's say. I use this for a cross stitch also. If you're going to use a hoop, you don't want a hoop larger than the size of your hand. You want to be able to have the hoop in your hand like this. So this is a four inch, and I believe this is a four inch. This is a wooden um, Hardwick Manor hoop that I have wrapped. Okay, but see how it fits in my hand. That way, I always know what's going on on the back of my fabric, always. So that applies to hard anger, that applies to cross stitch. But you can use a hoop if you want to. It's not required. Like I said, there's a lot of it that I stitch without a hoop. And then there are parts that I stitch with a hoop. And we'll get into all of that when we go through the various steps. So hoops are okay. Just use a hoop that does not have a lip on it and that is small enough to fit in your hand. So I think that pretty much covers um, supplies. Okay. Next up will be how to read a chart. Okay. I have this series divided into individual step segments to take you through the process of learning hard anger embroidery and each step will be its own separate video so that if there's something that you want to know you don't have to sit and watch the whole thing to get to that part that you have questions about you can just go to that particular video so so far i have planned this one as the intro the next one is how to read a chart then it's how to do the cluster blocks. Next is buttonhole stitch. Next is cutting and wrapping. How to cut away your excess fabric, like free your design from the fabric that it's on, because we're gonna, because as you see on this, it's cut away. All the excess fabric was cut away. And that will probably be just the basics. After that, I'll extend the series on how to do certain decorative stitches, but on um, dove's eyes, picots, uh, spider webs, different kinds of wrapping bars. Um, so I look forward to you joining me and I hope you find these, this series helpful. And I will be back with the next step in reading a chart. Have a great day, and I will see you next time.